gesegnet und sabbat alle zusammen. Lass uns mit deinem stillen Gebet beginnen. Okay, if we begin, just go to John 6 and verse 63. Okay, fangen wir in Johannes 6, Vers 63 an. There is no notes, we're just going to go straight out the Bible. Und es gibt jetzt keine Notizen, wir werden direkt zur Bibel gehen. It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So what are God's words? Was sind Gottes Worte? No, they, they are the words of life, as Peter said, sind right? Geist und Leben oder die Worte des Lebens, wie Petrus sagt. Your flesh profits you nothing at all, right? Und dein Fleisch, Fleisch das nützt dir gar nichts. And if you just go to the next chapter, in John, or John chapter 8, should I say. Gehen wir dann zu Johannes 8. In verse 32. Und dann Vers 32. It says, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free, right? So you see here, it's only by receiving the words of life that we can be set free from Satan's bondage that he holds us in. Right? Also, we can see that only when we the words of life, we can be free from Satan's bondage, befreed from in which he holds us captive. And the Lord always uses natural things to teach us spiritual lessons. The Herr benutzt immer natürliche Dinge, um um uns geistliche Lektionen zu lehren. Putin and his great army is just an illustration of Satan and all his angels. Putin und seine große Armee ist einfach eine Darstellung von Satan und seiner großen Armee von bösen Engeln. Okay, and first he tries to deceive you, and then he wants to destroy you. Und zuerst versucht er dich immer zu verführen und dann möchte er dich zerstören. Aber wenn wir die Worte des Lebens erhalten, dann werden sie ein Schutzschild gegen seine Täuschungen sein. Amen. Amen. Okay, so what we want to do is look at what the Lord says on this topic. Und was wir jetzt tun wollen, ist, wir wollen anschauen, was der Herr über dieses Thema zu sagen hat. So go to Daniel chapter 7. Gehen wir dazu zu Daniel 7. And verse 7. Daniel 7, Vers 7. Because all the stories in the Bible are all speaking about this, this final kingdom, right? Weil alle Geschichten der Bibel sprechen über dieses finale Königreich. And it's Satan's kingdom, Gog's kingdom. Und es ist Satan's Königreich, das ist Gog's Königreich. And Putin is just giving the whole world an illustration of Satan's character. Und äh, Putin gibt momentan der gesamten Welt einfach eine Darstellung von Satans Charakter. And how he will treat his own kingdom and all those that oppose him, right? Wie er nämlich sein eigenes Königreich oder seine eigenen Untertanen äh, beherrschen würde und auch alle, die ihm irgendwie widerstehen sollten. Okay, and the prophetic narrative leads us down to this final battle, the battle of Armageddon. Right? Und die prophetische Erzählung führt uns ja dann zu diesem zu der letzten Schlacht, nämlich der Schlacht von Armageddon. 
Okay, and at verse 7, right? Und jetzt hier in Vers 7. It says, after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Right? And this is an illustration of this fourth kingdom, right? Das ist eine Darstellung von diesem vierten Königreich. And the fourth kingdom is represented this time period of great tribulation here, right? Das vierte Königreich ist ja dann diese Zeit hier von dieser großen Trübsal. Amen. Richtig. Right. Amen. And how what the Lord is going to do in this final battle of Armageddon und for his people. Und dann was der Herr hier tun wird und dann auch hier in dieser finalen Schlacht von Armageddon. Okay, because right here the Lord cuts his, his work short, right? Und hier wird der, der Herr sein Werk abschneiden oder abkürzen. In the sense that he is going to interpose for his people in this part, right? In dem Sinn, dass er jetzt für sein Volk eintreten wird. Okay, so go to Joel chapter 1. Gehen wir jetzt zu Joel 1. And let's see how the Lord interposes for his people. Und lass uns anschauen, wie der Herr dann für sein Volk einschreiten wird. Okay. And let's begin in verse 2. Joel, chapter 1. Yes, chapter 1, verse 2. Joel 1, verse 2. It says, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm, worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. So, bis Vers 4. Where, where does the Lord bring us to? Also, wo bringt uns der Herr hier hin? To the fourth, this caterpillar, right? Zum äh, vierten hier zu dieser Raupe. Okay, and it goes on to say, right? Sagt dann weiter. Verse 5. Vers 5. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. So what does the Lord do for his people at this time? Ist Vers 6, right also here. was wird der Herr zu dieser Zeit hier machen? Right, he sends a last warning message. Er sendet right? hier eine letzte Warnungsbotschaft. He doesn't prevent uh, the, the, the evil ones from doing uh, what he's going to do, but he restrains him until the last warning message is given, right? Also er wird die Bösen hier nicht abhalten, zu tun, was sie tun wollen, aber er wird sie zügeln, damit noch diese letzte Warnungsbotschaft hier ergehen kann. Okay, in Vers 7. Und dann Vers 7. It says, he hath laid my vine waste, and barred my fig tree, he hath made it clean bare, and cast it away, the branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her Youth. So what is he telling us that we must do? Bis Vers 8. Also was sagt die Bibel uns hier? Was müssen wir tun? When we realize what this illustrates, right? Wenn wir realisieren, was das darstellt. That is an illustration pointing to us, right? Das ist eine Darstellung ist, die auf uns weist. It's telling us to wake up, right? Und sie sagt uns aufzuwachen. And lament for to restore our relationship with Christ, right? Und dass wir dann lamentieren sollen, um unsere Beziehung mit Christus wiederherzustellen. Right? Richtig? Because it is is telling us that the relationship that we think we have, we don't have. Denn right? es sagt uns hier, dass die Beziehung, die wir mit Christus haben, oder wo wir denken, dass wir sie haben würden, haben wir in Wirklichkeit gar nicht. Okay, go to chapter 2 and verse uh, 15. Gehen wir jetzt zu Kapitel 2 und Vers 15. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, <coughs> sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride 
out of her closet. Who's been gathered? Bis Vers 16, also wer wird hier versammelt? The congregation, but what, what does it say about them? Die Versammlung, aber was sagt es hier über sie? Those that? Okay, so what's wrong with that? Also diejenigen, die noch hier die Brüste saugen, was ist verkehrt daran? They're, they're still on the milk, right? Sie sind immer noch äh, am Milch trinken. And if they're still on the milk, what's wrong with them? Und wenn sie immer noch Milch trinken, was ist dann verkehrt mit ihnen? They're not born again, right? Sie sind noch nicht von neuem geboren. Okay, so what's it telling us about us? Also was sagt es also über uns? Yeah, our hearts are degenerate, right? Also dasselbe, unsere Herzen sind noch degeneriert. So verse 17. Vers 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? So the heathen in this illustration are just a, an, an external illustration of Satan and his evil angels, right? Also the heathen here in this Darstellung sind einfach nur eine externe Darstellung von Satan und seinen bösen Engeln. Right? What he's been doing to their hearts, right? Und uh, was sie dann ihren Herzen angetan haben. Because when we go back to, to chapter 1, Denn wenn wir nochmal zurückgehen zu Kapitel 1, Vers 4, und dann Vers 4, It says, that which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. What are those symbols of? Also, what uh, symbolisiert das hier? He has the garden. So, what's the garden an illustration of? Also, es sind Sachen aus dem Garten und was ist, was stellt der Garten symbolisch dar? Your heart, right? Unser Herz. So these worms are in our hearts, eating away and devouring our spirituality, right? Also, Würmer und Raupen sind in unserem Herzen und sie fressen sozusagen unsere geistliche Gesinnung hinweg. Okay, and if they succeed, then Satan will ultimately get the victory and he will be a ruler over us for eternity. Right? Und wenn sie Erfolg haben, dann wird Satan letztendlich unser Herrscher für alle Ewigkeit. Okay, but if you go to verse 18, und gehen wir jetzt, ja, back to chapter 2, verse 18. Zurück zu Kapitel 2 und dann Vers 18. So in verse 17 it says, weep between the porch and the altar. Also Vers 17 hat ja gesagt, heule zwischen dem Altar und der Säulenhalle. It says, then will the Lord be jealous for his what? His land, right? Also Vers 18, dann wird der Herr für sein Land eifern. Speaking about your heart, right? Das spricht ja dann über dein Herz. And pity his people, yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make your reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. Right? Bis Vers 20. So, just so you can see this northern army removing far off, if you go to, um, go to Luke chapter 4. Also Im Englischen steht ja, dass er diese Nordarmee weit weg tut von dir. Und um das jetzt zu sehen, gehen wir zu äh, Lukas 4. Mm -hmm. And Luke 4, verses 1 Uh, through 13, Lukas 4, Vers 1 bis 13 ist die finale Tentation. Und das ist über diese finale Versuchung. Und das ist ja, wo Satan kam, um Christus zu verzehren oder zu verschlingen. And he's trying to deceive him, right? Und er hat versucht, ihn zu verführen. And how does Christ answer him every time? Und wie hat Christus ihm jedes Mal geantwortet? Not it is my feelings, right? It is written, it is written, it is written, right? Er hat nicht geantwortet, ja, das sind meine Gefühle, sondern er hat immer gesagt, es steht geschrieben, es steht geschrieben, es steht geschrieben. So, you always have a thus saith the Lord to justify your words and actions, right? Deswegen, du hast immer dann ein, es steht geschrieben, so spricht der Herr für deine Worte und Taten, um sie zu rechtfertigen mit Gottes Wort. Okay, and if you just go to verse 12. Gehen wir jetzt zu Vers 12. 
And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. What did he do? Bis Vers 13, was tat der Teufel? Yeah, he flees from him, right? Also er ist vor ihm weggeflohen. Okay, and just to prove this point, go to James uh, chapter 1. Und gehen wir jetzt noch zu Jakobus 1, um den Punkt zu, weiter zu beweisen. Jakobus 1. Because Christ was resisting him with a thus saith the Lord, right? Weil Christus hat ihm ja mit einem, äh, so spricht der Herr, widerstanden. Jakobus 1. I think it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Es ist doch Kapitel 4. Fangen wir in Vers 6 an. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will what? Vers 7. Widerstehe den Teufel what does it say? und was wird er tun? He will flee from you, right? Er wird vor, vor dir wegfliehen. Okay, so go back to Joel chapter 2. Gehen wir zurück zu Joel 2. So in Vers 17, if we weep between the porch and the altar, right? Also in Vers 17, wenn wir zwischen äh, dem, äh, der Säulenhalle und dem Altar weinen. In Vers 20. Und dann Vers 20. It says, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savour shall come up, because he hath done great things. Amen. Amen. So if we resist Satan through uh, thus saith the Lord in this time period, he will flee from us. Right? Also, wenn wir Satan mit einem, so spricht der Herr, widerstehen in dieser Zeit, dann wird er letztendlich von uns wegfliehen. Amen. Amen. So go to Joel chapter 3. Gehen wir jetzt zu Joel 3. And let's go to verse 9. Und dann zu Vers 9. Okay, because in verse 1 we read, we are to awake, right? Denn in Kapitel 1 haben wir gelesen, dass wir aufwachen müssen. We are, we are to awake and weep between the porch and the altar and confess our sins. Wir müssen right? aufwachen und dann zwischen der Säulenhalle und dem Altar weinen und unsere Sünden bekennen. But here it says in verse 9, Aber hier sagt es jetzt in 3, Vers 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. What are the Gentiles to do? Also was sollen die Heiden tun? Prepare war, right? Sie sollen sich auf den Krieg vorbereiten. And this army that comes up here, who brings this army? Und diese Armee, die hier aufkommt, wer bringt sie mit sich? Okay, the, the answer is... Uh, Okay. One second. Yes. Yes. Verse 25. Okay. It says, And I will restore to you the years the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the, and the palmer worm, My great army, which I sent among you, right? So, meine große Armee, die ich unter euch gesandt habe. We read the other day in class, the Assyrian is sent against a nation of hypocrites, right? Und wir haben ja äh, vor kurzem in der Klasse auch gelesen, dass der Assyrer gegen eine Nation der Heuchler gesandt worden ist. What's a hypocrite? Und was ist ein Heuchler? Ja, yeah, so it's got an outward appearance, but inwardly you don't have the spirit of Christ, right? Also, du hast nur so einen äußerlichen Schein, aber inwendig hast du nicht den Geist Christi. So we've got to receive the words of life, right? Und wir müssen ja die Worte des Lebens erhalten. He has to say to us, live, right? Du musst uns sagen, lebe. Okay, so go back to Joel 3, in verse 9. Gehen wir zurück zu Joel, Kapitel 3, Vers 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. So who's waking up this, these people? Also wer weckt diese Leute hier auf? 
the Lord is, right? Der Herr tut das. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. So where do the heathen come up and come bis to Vers, their boat? Bis Vers 13. Also, wo kommen die Heiden jetzt auf und im Lagern? Okay, so, so, so where then? Also, wenn die Ernte beginnt, also wo ist das? Right, so when he's telling God's people to wake up because a nation's come upon his land, it's because the Lord woke them up and brought them up against them, right? Das ist auch da, wo der Herr seinem Volk sagt, wachet auf. Denn diese Nation ist ja über das Land gekommen. Also der Herr hat sie aufgeweckt und sie dann gegen das Land geschickt. Right? Richtig. So put you in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. This is speaking about Gog. Right? Because when Gog comes up against here, this marks the point where the Lord is going to rebuke him. Right? Also, ihre Bosheit ist groß, das spricht dann über Gog, dass wenn er nämlich hier aufkommt und gegen sein Volk, gegen Gottes Volk zieht, dann wird der Herr ihn ja schelten. Is the wickedness of God great at that point? Ist uh, die Bosheit von Gog an diesem Punkt jetzt groß? Yes, right? Ja. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is what? Near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people, and the strength of the children of Israel. Bis Vers 16. And the point I want you to get from that is the Lord roars out of Zion when he punishes the heathen. Right? Und ich machen möchte, ist, dass der Herr aus... Zion brüllen wird, wenn er die Heiden bestrafen wird. It's the day of the Lord. It's when he does this final work right here at the end. Tag des Herrn. Das ist, wenn er dieses finale Werk dann hier am Ende machen wird. Because he says that the day of the Lord is near and he says when that day comes he's going to roar out of Zion. Right? Also es sagt, der Tag ist nahe, das Herrn ist nahe und wenn der Tag kommt, dann wird er aus Zion brüllen. R right? Richtig. Okay. So, now go to Amos Chapter 1. Jetzt gehen wir zu Amos 1. And let's begin in verse 1. Amos 1, Vers 1. It says, The words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Jesus, Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake, right? So specifically marking a message that's given to God's people before the earthquake, right? So it's markiert hier eine, eine Botschaft, oder einen besonderen, markiert es hier eine Botschaft, die zwei Jahre vor diesem Erdbeben gegeben wird. Okay, Vers 2. Vers 2. And he said, the Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Where did we just read that? Wo haben wir das gerade gelesen? Was in Vers 2 steht. In Joel, right? In Buch Joel. It's marking the point where he's going to utter his judgments, right? Okay, diesen Punkt, wo er jetzt seine Gerichte dann äh, aussprechen wird. He said, the Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the inhabitants of the shepherds shall mourn and the top of Carmel shall wither. So when he utters His voice from Jerusalem, it's marking a point where many people are going to mourn, right? Also, wenn er seine Stimme von Jerusalem aus erscheinen lässt, dann werden viele Leute anfangen zu wehklagen. Okay, and now he's going to explain why, right? Und jetzt wird er fortfahren, um zu erklären, warum. It says, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. So, so why is the Lord punishing them? Was warum bestraft der Herr? 
abominations. Because of the fourth abomination, right? Deswegen ist es ein vierten Gräuel. It's the fourth transgression, right? Die vierte Übertretung. Right, when we go to Ezekiel 8, when does he not hear their prayers anymore? In Ezekiel 8, wann wird er ihre Gebete nicht mehr hören? And the fourth, right? In, beim vierten. So, vierten Gräuel. Because they do this work in here, right? Now he's not going to forgive them. He's going to punish them, right? Und weil sie jetzt dieses Werk hier drinne tun werden, wird er ihnen nicht mehr vergeben. Er wird sie jetzt hier bestrafen. Okay. And what do you have here in Amos? Is a list of all different nations, right? Und was wir hier in Amos vorfinden, ist eine Liste von all den verschiedenen Nationen. There are all these nations that illustrate this final evil nation at the end of the world. Und diese ganzen Nationen illustrieren diese finale böse Nation hier am Ende der Welt. So, he he goes on, he, uh, so uh, let's read verse 3 again. Right? Lass uns nochmal Vers 3 lesen. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazael which shall devour the palaces of Benedad. So what's he going to do because of this fourth transgression? Das ist vier. Also was wird er tun wegen diesem wegen dieser vierten Übertretung? Send a fire. Yeah, he's going to send a fire and what's it going to do? Also wird ein Feuer senden und was wird dieses Feuer tun? Devour. Devour what? The palaces. The palaces, right? Es wird diese Paläste verzehren. Okay. So, because of this fourth transgression, he's going to send a fire, and that fire is going to devour the palaces, right? In the fourth coil or the fourth transgression, he will send a fire, and this fire will devour the palaces. Where was he? The king has it. Doesn't matter. We're not dealing with all the different things, right? There's different ones in every illustration, right? These these are all individual. Nations, it's talking about, but I'm not dealing with the individual nations. We're just dealing with the the principles contained here. Right? Also, wir sind jetzt alles hier verschiedene Nationen gelistet, aber wir wollen jetzt nicht irgendwie in die buchstäblichen Nationen gehen, sondern wir wollen uns einfach nur die Prinzipien anschauen. Der okay. Gerichte hier. Vers 5. Vers 5. I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the plain of Avon and him that holdeth the scepter from the house of Eden. And the people of Syria shall go into captivity unto Kir, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. Verse 6. Right, so he's telling them that this is this fourth transgression, and now he's going to punish them for these things that they did, right? So he said, this is now the fourth Übertretung and now he will punish them for the things that they did. Okay, I just want to show you something. Go to Genesis 15. Keep your place there. Hold your finger here and I want to show you something in 1 Mose 15. Because God's principles never change, right? Because God's principles never change. Verse 13. 1 Mose 15, verse 13. And this is speaking about being delivered from Pharaoh, right? Und das spricht darüber, wie sie von Pharao befreit worden sind. Pharaoh is Gog, he's Satan, right? Pharao is Gog, er ist Satan. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they serve will I judge. So, according to the principles that we've been looking at, when is he going to judge this nation? So, gemäß den Prinzipien, die wir uns angeschaut haben, wann wird er diese Nation bestrafen oder richten? Okay, at the end, when they fulfilled the fourth transgression. Right? Also am Ende, wenn äh, sie diese vierte Übertretung vollendet haben. It says, will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation... They shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Bis Vers 16. So what have they got to wait for? Bis wohin mussten sie warten? You got to wait until the transgression is full, right? Bis die Übertretung voll gemacht worden ist. Okay, so when the fourth transgression is full, then he's going to punish them, right? Also wenn die vierte Übertretung 
voll gemacht worden ist, dann wird er sie bestrafen. And God's people will be delivered and come out with great substance, right? Gottes Volk wird dann befreit werden und mit großer Habe ausziehen. So go back to Amos, right? Gehen wir zurück zu Amos. Back to verse 6. Zurück zu Vers 6. Amos 1, Vers 6. It says, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive, the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a what? A fire. A fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. Right? Also, er wird wieder ein Feuer senden und die Paläste verzehren. Same illustration, right? Selbe, selbe Darstellung. Okay. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and him that holdeth the scepter from Ashkelon and I will turn mine hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, saith the Lord God. He's just listing all the different nations, right? Also er listet jetzt hier diese ganzen verschiedenen Nationen auf. Okay. So, verse 9. Vers 9. This is the third time, right? Das dritte Erwähnung jetzt hier. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remembered not the brotherly covenant. But I will send thee. You don't need to read it. God doesn't change, right? I will send thee fire on the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the palaces. There it right? is. wieder, es endet wieder ein Feuer. Er verändert sich nicht. Bringt dasselbe Gericht über die Paläste hier. Right. Same every time, right? You're just bringing them together, line upon line, right? Selbe immer das, selbe Gericht immer, und wir müssen sie zusammen Linie auf Linie bringen. Verse 11. Vers 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Timan, which shall devour the palaces of Bozrah. Four times he says it, right? Vers 12, jetzt das vierte Mal, wo er das jetzt gesagt hat. So, as God's people, we are required to go through these different illustrations and find them in the Bible or in history and understand and bring them all together line upon line, right? Und als Gottes Volk sind wir aufgefordert, diese verschiedenen Darstellungen dann in der Geschichte und in der Bibel dann zu finden und sie Linie auf Linie dann zusammenzubringen. Okay, fifth one, verse 13. Fünfte Erwähnung, Vers 13. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with child of Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it shall devour the palaces thereof, with shouting in the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. And their king shall go into captivity, and his princes together, saith the Lord. Amen? Bis, bis Vers 15. Amen. So, every time he sends a fire and he devours their palaces. Jedes Mal sendet er ein Feuer, und dieses Feuer verzehrt ihre Paläste. Amen? Amen. Go to the next chapter, right? Jetzt gehen wir zum nächsten Kapitel. So, it's five times that we read that in the first also im ersten Kapitel hatten wir jetzt fünfmal diese Erwähnung gehabt. Jetzt gehen wir zum nächsten Kapitel. Vers 1. Kapitel 2, Vers 1. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into line. But I will send a fire upon Moab, and it shall devour the palaces of Kerioth. Same thing, right? So ist Vers 2 wieder dasselbe. And Moab shall die with tumult, with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof, and will slay all the princes thereof with him, saith the Lord. So, this fire that's devouring all these things, what's it typifying? Also dieses Feuer, was hier alles verzehrt, was typifiziert das? Yeah, the end of the thousand years, that fire is going to come down from heaven and devour them all. Das Feuer, was am Ende der tausend Jahre runterkommen wird und alle verzehren wird. And it's speaking about the day of the Lord, which we shall see in a moment, right? Das spricht über den Tag des Herrn, und das werden wir gleich noch genauer sehen. And the day of the Lord comes against whom? Und der Tag des Herrn kommt gegen wen? Babylon and false Jerusalem, right? Und Babylon und gegen das falsche Jerusalem. And yesterday we were looking at the book of Zephaniah, and it puts them both together as being punished on the day of the Lord. 
Right. Und gestern haben wir im Buch Zephania uns das angeschaut und Zephania bringt diese beiden Bestrafungen zusammen und setzt sowohl die Zerstörung oder Bestrafung Babylons als auch Jerusalems an den Tag des Herrn. Okay, so false Jerusalem are those that get deceived in this time period and do not break free. Right? Das, äh, falsche Jerusalem stellt dann diejenigen dar, die in dieser Zeit hier verführt werden und nicht losbrechen von Satan. And what did we read yesterday? Those that eat and drink with the drunken, what will they do? Und was haben wir gestern gelesen? Diejenigen, die mit den Trunkenen essen und trinken, was werden sie tun? They smite their fellow servants, right? Sie werden anfangen, ihre Mitknechte zu schlagen. Okay, so let's read verse 4. Lass uns weiterlesen in Vers 4. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have despised the law of the Lord. What did they despise? Was haben sie uh, verachtet? The flying roll. Die fliegende Buchrolle. And what's the flying roll? Und was ist die fliegende Buchrolle? <laughs> It's the final warning message, right? Das ist die finale Warnungsbotschaft. Right. It says they despise the law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments and their lies caused them to err after the which their fathers have walked but I will send a fire upon Judah and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Vers 5. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Israel and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they sold the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of shoes that pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor and turn aside the way of the meek and a man and his father will go in unto the same maid to profane my holy name and they lay themselves down upon clothes laid to pledge by every altar and they drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. What do they do? Also, was tun sie hier bis Vers 8? Who are they eating and drinking with? Mit wem trinken und essen sie? The drunken, right? Mit den Bösen, mit den Trunkenen. True wine that they're drinking. This is false wine, right? Das ist kein wahrer Wein, den sie hier trinken. Das ist der falsche Wein. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, And he was strong as the oaks, yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you forty years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. And I raised you up of your sons for prophets and your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy! Not. So what does Israel not want God's people to do? Vers 12. Also was möchte Israel nicht, dass Gottes Volk tut? They don't want them to bring conviction upon their stubborn hearts. Right? Sie wollen nicht, dass Überführung über ihre sturen Herzen gebracht wird. They don't want to hear what God has to say to them. They want to hear their smooth things that appeal to the carnal nature. Sie wollen nicht hören, was Gott ihnen zu sagen hat, sondern sie wollen, dass letztendlich diese glatten Worte ihre fleischliche Natur ja, befriedigen. Behold, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore the flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Neither shall he stand that handleth the bow, and he that is swift on foot shall not deliver himself. Neither shall he that rideth the horse deliver himself. And he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, saith the Lord. Bis Vers 16. What shall he do? Was wird er tun? <laughs> flee away naked, right? Wird nackt hinwegfliehen. Okay, so where do we get an illustration of that? Und wo finden wir eine Darstellung davon? Go to, go to Mark chapter 4. Gehen wir zu 14. Mark 14, excuse me. Gehen wir zu Markus 14. Vers 51 und 52. Verse 51 und 52. In fact, let's just read verse 50, right? Fangen, fangen wir schon in Vers 50 an, also Markus 14, ab Vers 50. See, we showed you that 
If you resist Satan, he will flee from you, right? Wenn wir mal gesehen, dass wenn wir Satan widerstehen, dann wird Satan von uns fliehen. But the opposite is, if you don't resist Satan, you will flee from Christ. Aber right? das Gegen, der Gegensatz dazu ist, dass wenn du Satan nicht widerstehst, dann wirst du vor Christus fliehen. It says, and they all forsook him and fled. How many fled? Wie viele sind geflohen? All. Alle von ihnen. And why did they flee? Und warum sind sie geflohen? Because they didn't watch and pray, right? Weil sie nicht gewacht und gebetet haben. And there followed him certain, a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body, and the young men laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked, right? Das ist Vers 52. And this is exactly what we read in Amos chapter 2, right? Und das ist genau das, was wir in Amos Kapitel 2 gelesen All haben. Strength, says, right? Sagt er, alle, die es versuchen, in eigener Kraft zu tun, werden sich nicht selbst befreien können. And then, when that happens, you will flee from Christ when he reveals himself, right? Und dann äh, wirst du letztendlich vor Christus wegfliehen, wenn er sich dir offenbaren möchte. Okay. So, um, Sorry? Acts 19 is the same. 19, 16. What, what does it say? Uh, Apostelgeschichte 19, Vers 16 steht dann. Said one was steht dann was ähnliches. And, and just, just, just read what it says. Yeah, 19, 16. Apostelgeschichte 19, Vers 16. <lacht> And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Yes, but okay, but it's not, it's same principle, but not the same illustration. Das ist dasselbe Prinzip, aber es ist nicht dieselbe Darstellung. Okay, this is speaking about um, people that don't know Christ, that try to... Um, I mean the same principle they're trying to defeat Satan in their own strength. Right? Wir das äh, Prinzip sehen in dem Sinn, dass sie hier Satan in eigener Kraft besiegen wollen. Okay. So if you go back to um, go back to the book of Amos. Gehen wir zurück zum Buch Amos. And go to chapter 3. Und gehen wir jetzt zu Amos 3. This chapter we are quite familiar with. Und dieses Kapitel, da sind wir schon in gewissen Maß vertraut. So We read that the, the, the Lord is going to uh, is going to to save us by giving us a last warning message, right? Wir haben also gesehen, dass der Herr uns retten möchte durch diese letzte Warnungsbotschaft, die er uns gibt. Okay, and this is what we see here in chapter 3. Und das ist auch was wir jetzt hier in Kapitel 3 sehen können. Vers 1. Kapitel 3 Vers 1. He says, "Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you." What is it? Was ist das? It's against us, right? Es ist gegen uns gerichtet. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath taken no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto servants the prophets. Who will, the, who will also, they receive the secret? Also, wer wird das Geheimnis erhalten? His servants, right? Seine Knechte. It says, the lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, who can but prophesy? Bis Vers 8. Okay, so... This evil that's been brought here, the Lord did it, right? Also das Böse, was hier passiert ist, das hat der Herr herbeigeführt. Okay. So, just go, go across to chapter 4. Gehen wir jetzt zu Kapitel 4. And he's telling us what he's done to us to try and get us to repent. 
Right. Und er sagt uns jetzt, was er uns getan hat oder angetan hat, um uns zur Buße zu führen. Vers 9. Kapitel 4, Vers 9. It says, I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them. What did, who devoured them? Wer hat das, diese Bäume verzerrt? The palmer worm, right? The palmer worm. This is what we read in Joel. The palmer worm is a spiritual expression for the northern army, right? Und dieser palmer worm, der kam ja auch schon in Joel Kapitel 1 vor. Und das ist ein geistliche, geistlicher Ausdruck für diese Nordarmee. Okay. So, Kapitel 4, Vers 9. Amos 4, Vers 9. Okay, it says, the palmer worm devoured them, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So what did the Lord do here? Also was hat der Herr hier getan? He brought worms into their garden to show, teach them a spiritual lesson, right? Also er hat Würmer in ihren Garten gebracht, um ihnen eine geistliche Lektion damit zu lehren. I could name you about ten different items in our garden that have had worms in them this year, right? Ich kann euch... Uh Zehn verschiedene ähm, ja, Garten, äh, also Obst und Gemüse nennen, welche Wo Würmer dieses Jahr in sich hatten. Does the Lord use the natural things to teach us spiritual lessons? Und äh, benutzt der Herr die natürlichen Dinge, um, um uns geistliche Lektionen zu lehren? But it says, yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Und dennoch seid ihr nicht zu mir umgekehrt, sagt der Herr. What, what are we too busy doing? Looking at the natural, thinking, how can we... How can, whose fault is it that this happened, right? Und was ist denn unser Problem? Wir sind zu beschäftigt damit zu schauen, das Buchstäbliche anzuschauen und sagen, ja, wessen Fehler ist denn das jetzt, dass diese ganzen Würmer da sind? Too busy accusing other people rather than understanding that it's the Lord that did it, right? Wir sind zu beschäftigt, andere Leute anzuklagen, anstatt zu verstehen, dass der Herr das herbeigeführt hat. It says, I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men I have slain with the sword and have taken away your horses and I have made the stink of your camps to come up to your nostrils yet have ye not returned unto me saith the Lord. This verse 10. Right? So, it's an illustration, right? And in order for the illustration to have effect he has to allow it to appear to be illustrated in the literal things, right? Also eine Darstellung und damit das eine Wirkung haben kann, muss er das auch in sozusagen in der buchstäblichen äh, Sache dann auch illustrieren. Is to teach us about the condition of our hearts. Und das right? soll uns etwas über den Zustand unserer Herzen beibringen. The garden is an illustration of our hearts. Der right? Garten ist eine Darstellung unserer Herzen. When the garden is in confusion, your heart is in confusion, Und wenn right? unser, Gar unser Garten in Verwirrung ist, dann ist unser Herz in Verwirrung. Okay, Vers 11. Vers 11. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. What need we need to do? Bis Vers 12. Also was müssen wir tun? We need to prepare to meet him, right? Wir müssen uns vorbereiten, ihm zu begegnen. So what did Joel say to do to prepare? Was hat Joel gesagt? Was müssen wir tun, um uns vorzubereiten? To weep between the porch and the altar. Wir müssen zwischen der Säulenhalle und dem Altar weinen. And if we do that, weeping between the porch and the altar, what does he promise to do? Und wenn wir dieses Werk tun und zwischen der Säulenhalle und dem Altar weinen, was hat er versprochen zu tun? To remove these, the, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the, um, the caterpillar and the, the locust, right? Dass er dann diese vier Insekten dann beseitigen würde. Which I sent among you, right? Die er unter uns gesandt hat. Don't delude ourselves in this, right? Wir müssen uns da nicht äh, irgendwie darüber täuschen lassen. Okay, if you go to chapter 5 and verse 1, wenn wir zu Kapitel 5, Vers 1 gehen, it says, Hear ye this word, which I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. Who is it against? Gegen wen ist das hier? 
God's people, right? Gegen äh, Gottes Volk. So don't deceive yourself that he's speaking to you and think that he's speaking to somebody else, right? Also, äh, lass dich nicht täuschen, äh, indem du denkst, ja, das spricht jetzt nicht wirklich zu mir, sondern nur über andere. Okay, it says, um, if you go to verse um, 14, Gehen wir jetzt zu Vers 14. It says, seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Right? So when you weep between the porch and the altar, das ist right, you're confessing what you've done and said that is evil, right? Also wenn du zwischen der Säulenhalle und dem Altar weinst, das bedeutet, dass du jetzt all das bekennst, was du gesagt und getan hast, was bösartig war. Right, you're, co you're confessing, you're murmuring, you're complaining, you're accusing, all those things that bring sickness, Sister White says, right? Also, du wirst deine ganzen Murren und rumklagen und äh, anklagen, alles bekennen, all diese Dinge, die Krankheit hervorbringen, wie Ellen White sagt. Vers 16. Vers 16. Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith us, Wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all vineyards shall be wailing, For I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. What is it? Bis Vers 18. Also was ist der Tag des Herrn? If you have not confessed your sins, it's darkness and not light. Right? Also wenn du deine Sünden nicht bekannt hast, dann wird der Tag des Herrn Finsternis für dich sein und nicht Licht. As if a man did flee from a lion, And the bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, <coughs> even very dark and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept it, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Amen? It's verse 24. It's just like when he says to David, I'm not interested in your these animal sacrifices. I want what it spiritually means, right? So wie, auch, wie auch David gesagt hat, ich bin, dass der Herr gar nicht interessiert ist an diesen buchstäblichen Tieropfern, sondern an, nur an dem, was es eigentlich bedeutet, geistlich gesehen. What he wants us to hear is us, us weeping and mourning for our sin, right? Was der Herr hören möchte, ist, dass wir weinen und wehklagen über unsere Sünden. That is music to his ears, right? Das ist Musik für seine Ohren. Okay, and Let us judge righteously, it says, right? Das sagt, lass uns gerecht richten. Not according to our own evil hearts. Und nicht gemäß unserer eigenen bösen Herzen. It says, Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and chioned your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity. Beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Bis Vers 27. And brothers and sisters, we have to take these things seriously, as difficult as it is with an evil heart. Right? Liebe Geschwister, wir müssen diese Dinge sehr ernst nehmen, so schwer das auch sein möge mit diesem bösen Herz, was wir haben. Okay, chapter 6, verse 1. Kapitel 6, Vers 1. It says, Woe to them that are e at ease in Zion, and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Pass ye unto Calne, and see, from thence go ye to Hamath the great, 
Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Be they better than these kingdoms, or their border greater than your border? Ye that put far away the evil day, and cause the seat of violence to come near. So when you put off das from you that evil day, what are you actually doing? Also wenn du diesen bösen Tag von dir sozusagen fern tust, was tust du damit? You're bringing it nearer, it says. Und sagt, es äh, kommt dann eigentlich umso näher zu dir. Right? Because when, when you begin to sigh and cry and truly weep, the Lord will hold it off, right? Denn wenn du weinst und wehklagst, dann wird der Herr diesen Tag noch hinauszögern. But when you refuse to do that work, it's going to come upon you suddenly. It's going to come quicker than you think. Right? Wenn du es ablehnst, dieses Werk zu tun, dann wird es plötzlich über dich kommen, schneller als du denkst. Okay, go to chapter 8. Gehen wir zu Amos 8. Vers 1. Amos 8, Vers 1. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. What have these people done? Also, was haben diese Leute getan? They've brought forth... Finish the sentence. Sie haben was hervorgebracht? Fruit, meat for repentance, Sie haben right? Frucht hervorgebracht, die der Buße würdig ist. While the Lord was passing them by in the time of mercy, they received that that reproof that they needed to bring them to repentance. Also right? Während der Herr an ihnen vorüberzog in der, in der Zeit der Barmherzigkeit, haben sie diesen Tadel angenommen, den der Herr ihnen geben wollte. Und das hat sie zu Buße geführt. Okay, but Vers 3. Jetzt Vers 3. And the songs of the temple shall be what? Howlings in that day, right? Also das Lied des Tempels wird in, an diesem Tag Wehklagen sein. Okay, just hold your place there. Go to Zephaniah <coughs> chapter 1. We read this yesterday. Und haltet euren Finger hier und gehen wir jetzt zu Zephania 1. Das haben wir gestern gelesen. Let's begin in verse 7. Zephania 1, ab Vers 7. It says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is what? At hand. Same point, same last message, right? Also der Tag des Herrn ist nahe, das ist derselbe Punkt, dieselbe Botschaft. For the Lord hath prepared his sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So if you don't bis Vers 8. have his righteousness on, he's going to punish you. Right? Also wenn du seine Gerechtigkeit nicht anhast, dann wird er dich bestrafen. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be a noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a what? A howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. How ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down, and they that bear silver are cut off. Amen. Also bis Vers 11, da gibt es dann auch dieses Heulen und Wehklagen. Amen. And it shall come to pass that at that time I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Bis Vers 12. But he's going to do both, right? Aber er wird beides letztendlich tun. It's a blessing and a curse. Es wird nämlich ein Segen und ein Fluch werden. And these people that are settled in the leaves don't believe he's going to do either, right? Und diejenigen, die hier auf diesen äh, dies Hopfen sitzen, die, like äh, die sind letztendlich äh, unbedacht und sagen, ja, der Herr wird weder das eine noch das andere tun. Okay. Okay, so go back to... Amos 8 und Vers 3. Gehen wir jetzt zurück zu Amos 8, Vers 3. It says, And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, 
and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances of deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yet and sell the refuse of the wheat. The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up wholly as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall... Okay, the flood of Egypt is this Gog and Magog. Right? And the flood of Egypt is Gog and Magog. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day, and I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head, and I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and they shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. Bis Vers 13. Why will the virgins faint? Also warum werden die Jungfrauen verschmachten? Because they didn't wake up and weep and howl between the porch and the altar when they had opportunity. Weil sie nicht aufgewacht sind und zwischen der Säulenhalle und dem Altar wehklagt haben, als sie die Möglichkeit gehabt haben. Okay, so just let's close now. Go to the last chapter. Kommen wir jetzt zum Abschluss. Gehen wir zum letzten Kapitel von Amos. Just begin in verse 8. Und fangen in Kapitel 9, Vers 8 an. It says, Behold... The eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth, saying that, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Amen. This verse 12. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we need to take these things very seriously, right? Und liebe Geschwister, wir müssen diese Dinge sehr ernst nehmen. Because although we're not in the Sunday law, denn obwohl wir noch nicht im Sonntagsgesetz sind, these living illustrations are designed to teach us spiritual lessons, right? So sind diese lebendigen Darstellungen eingesetzt, um uns geistliche Lektionen zu lehren. And if we don't heed them, Satan will get the victory over us. Und wenn wir sie nicht hören, dann wird Satan den Sieg über uns erringen. And these words will fulfill as if they were the perfect fulfillment. Und diese Worte werden sich erfüllen, als wären sie schon die vollkommene Erfüllung. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's close with a closing hymn. Dann lass uns mit unserem Abschlusslied zum Schluss kommen. Okay, let's close. Lass uns mit Gebet abschließen. Lieber Herr Vater, Lord, I want to thank you for these living illustrations. Ja, ich möchte dir danken für diese lebendigen Darstellungen. The great love that you have upon us. Und deine große Liebe, die du zu uns hast. How long suffering and merciful you are to us. Und wie langmütig und barmherzig du uns gegenüber bist. It says that you would have none perish and all come to a knowledge of the truth. Und das sagt ja, du möchtest, dass keiner verloren geht, sondern dass jeder zur Erkenntnis der Wahrheit kommt. So please help us, Lord, to hear your voice speaking to us. So bitte hilf uns, dass wir deine Stimme hören, die zu uns spricht. And come to you, that we might have life. Und dass wir zu dir kommen, so dass wir Leben haben können. That we would hear these words of truth coming to us line upon line. Und dass wir diese Worte der Wahrheit hören, die Linie auf Linie zu uns kommen. And that we would humbly receive those things into our heart. Und dass wir diese Dinge 
demütig in unserem Herzen erhalten mögen. And as you've promised, Lord, it will not come back into your void. Und wie du dann versprochen hast, Herr, hast du gesagt, dass das nicht dann leer zu dir zurückkehren wird. But it will do that to which you sent it. Sondern es wird das, das vollbringen, wozu du es gesandt hast. And that it might bring forth fruit in due season. Und dass es dann Frucht in der rechten Zeit hervorbringt. Please hold back those winds of strife. So bitte halte diese Winde des Streites noch zurück. And bring us to repentance, we pray. Und führe uns zur Buße, das bitten wir. And may you fulfill your word in each one of us. Und mögest du dein Wort in uns allen erfüllen. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Und wir bitten das im Namen Jesu. Amen. Amen.